Hello and welcome you are watching Cricket Romania the show where we put back to ball on all things cricket joining me is sports journalist extraordinaire Mr Ayaz Memon hello Ayaz thank you bro also sharing that title is another guest who's joining us today Mr Pradeep magazine hi hi hello sir so let's get straight to the burning topic the burning issue the big news in the cricketing world today N Srinivasan president in exile of BCCI has been appointed as the new chairman of the ICC first thoughts are yours well look i think uh, you know this has been in, on the anvil i mean it's been under process for a while there's been a lot of opposition to it there's been a lot of speculation whether he will become uh, the chairman or not finally it's happened i think what really kind of cleared the decks for him was that the supreme court in india which has ordered uh, a fresh investigation into the ipl 6 scam uh, where uh, n srinivasan steam chennai super kings is involved and obliquely therefore uh, his son in law and obliquely therefore even him the supreme court didn't kind of debar him from becoming chairman of the I, uh, icc though it had not allowed him to take back position or start functioning as the bcci president even now it's he's still not functioning as the bcci president now right so the apex court had stopped hadn't stopped his nomination from becoming the chairman of the icci but while they while the supreme court had asked him to step aside from the president uh, ship of the bcci why was i mean why was he asked to step aside well that's because the investigation is going on to right. the scam and uh, you know he was asked first to step aside then uh, they they were ordered a fresh probe under justice mukul mudgal mm -hmm. with an enhanced panel with more powers uh, mr srinivasan did ask this did petition the supreme court that he should be allowed to take back office or resume mm -hmm. office as bcci president the supreme court said no but it did not stop him from becoming the icc chairman though yeah. there was a petition against mm -hmm. that from the cricket association of bihar the supreme court said no he can go ahead and become president of the chair uh, icc chairman right i remember when this news was out there was something about a white envelope not a, a sealed envelope with a few names and mr shrinivasan had alluded to it saying there is some uh, the supreme court has said there might be some information in it which you know is uh, is at uh, loggerheads with me being the president of the bcci any thoughts about what was there in the envelope see that's the case which is going on in india that's about the ipl 6 scam uh, in the earlier panel which probed it apart right. from uh, the mudgal report which right. came there was an envelope given to the supreme court in which apparently it said that there are 13 names mm -hmm. one of which allegedly is of shrinivasan wow. that envelope has still not been in a sense opened and probed uh, so i think mr shrinivasan himself perhaps admits that that perhaps his name is possibly there but uh, where the chairmanship of the icc is concerned i think this has been under process for the last maybe 5 6 months maybe maybe even longer mm -hmm. the whole game plan of how the icc would be in a sense rejigged restructured came through a couple of months back uh, there is the big 3 club which involves india australia and england uh, where you know it's a little complex to explain in a short program but where the sharing of the spoils mm -hmm. will be predominantly in favor of these three countries the other countries will get on a pro rata basis lesser amounts there was a hue and cry about it from other countries finally everybody seems to have agreed right so in a sense these three countries are more powerful than the other countries and of course india is the most powerful of course india being the most powerful and we have another powerful voice on our show mr pradeep magazine so your thoughts on this well i think jaz uh, jaz has explained it quite uh, well uh, all the intricacies of uh, how and why it happened but i i would all like to add is that from a personal perspective uh, or even a larger perspective many people and i am with them that uh, shrinivasan should not have been made the icc uh, chairman for the simple reason that if he has conflict of interest in india and if the supreme court uh as seems to not be part of the bcci running then that man should not be heading icc after all even icc deals with its uh, members uh, uh, on creating matters and if the man is under cloud in his own country how and why should he be heading the international body i think that's a question which icc and its members which include all other countries need to explain to uh, the cricketing fans that what they have done is is i don't think is principally right i i just want to share what uh, sure. or add or to what pradeep has said i think it's uh, you know it's very relevant and this is something that's been buzzing all over the cricket world 
uh, which is that uh, you know how come uh, there is a moral position also apart from the legal right. position that uh, while Mr. Srinivasan says that his conscience is clear the fact that there is a case which is raging should he then have taken that position uh, you know he has shown himself to be a very stodgy person where uh, following the legal path is concerned. Mm -hmm. So, he has pursued it very diligently. Mm -hmm. Everything has been legally defined for him and therefore, he has reached this position where there is no legal bar to his accepting or becoming or assuming the chairmanship of the, uh, uh, the ICC. What also is a little uh, you know uh, kind of quirky and quirky is a mild word is that almost every other cricket board seems to have agreed finally to his becoming the chairman. Uh, so, the danger for him is that there is a vulnerability. Suppose tomorrow the Justice Mukul Mudgal panel finds, indicts him directly, then what happens? Yeah. Is he going to have to surrender his chairmanship of the ICC? He has taken that step and he says, no, my conscience is clear, but what if the Mudgal committee finds it otherwise? So, there is a vulnerability to, uh, to him still attached. It is not just, you know, all gungo. Right, but the FICA has objected uh, to his disappointment. They have raised a voice against him. So, yeah, I mean they have, but I don't know. And Pradeep will perhaps bear me out. We'll ask him his opinion. See, FICA is the Federation of International Cricketers Association, uh, but no Indian member a player is a member of FICA. I don't, I don't think there are players from uh, uh, Pakistan or Bangladesh. Uh, and the other part of course is that players from Australia, from South Africa, from the West Indies, from Sri Lanka, uh, from New Zealand, barring England, they are all such, uh, you know, they are all participants in the Indian right. Premier, Premier League. They are getting a benefit out of playing in India where, uh, you know, BCCI president was N. Srinivasan or the Indian cricket board is so rich and powerful that it is kind of. Uh, giving them the financial benevolence. So, it becomes difficult whether they will get enough members to oppose this. I do not know what Pradeep's thoughts are on this. Well, uh, as, uh, as, uh, look the problem here is that why are not there no members from India say from the subcontinent for the simple reason that India has no uh, players union and the Indian board does not allow a players union in fact, it, 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 it goes against it and also it is not allowing them to be part of FICA. So, same is the case of Pakistan. So the problem arises from our own countries where we are not giving players an independent voice, where they can raise their grievances, they can talk to the board and, and uh, get them addressed. One is that problem. I think secondly, as you said, that the blame also lies on all other member countries that they did not have the courage or they did not want to go against uh, Srinivasan or the Indian board. And that is very simple because they know that the money comes from there. If they agree to this kind of an arrangement where three countries now dominate the ICC, they get the maximum share of the revenue, uh, where India gets the, the most uh, benefits, India's point of view is that because they generate uh, the maximum revenue, that's why they should benefit also the most. But in a in a sporting uh, perspective, you can't do this. That it's like if Brazil wins the World Cup, it should get the maximum uh, FIFA revenues, and other countries shouldn't. That's uh, that's not how the sporting world functions. So I, I think what India is doing here is just pushing its muzzling its uh, financial voice. And the other countries are just caving in, which in the long run may may do greater harm to the world cricket than any benefit. Uh, elaborate on the the fact, at least the aspect of uh, no Indian players being there in FICA is uh, you know one of that's I think a big setback actually in the in, even in the medium run, if not in the short run uh, or the long run certainly. Uh, there has never been a very robust cricketers association in India for some reason. This is even before. The, the BCCI became a, you know, a juggernaut. Uh, there has been a players union in the past. There were people like Bedi and Kapil Dev and Gavaskar and right up to perhaps even Kumble and the first uh, first few years of the Tendulkars, Kumbles and uh, Dravids. But after that, it seems to have kind of disappeared altogether. Now, I, I think that a strong players union, I do not mean union in the 
negative sense right. but a, 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 a body which represents players interest is very very important right. uh, it's not only about monetary benefits that you get but it's also about other related matters it's about how the game is progressing what can be done to improve it the technical yeah. aspect the administrative aspect and i think that indian cricket is doing itself a disservice if the administration is muzzling the players then the administration is being short sighted if the players are muzzling themselves are not showing enough you know need to become voices effective yeah. voices then i think they are short selling themselves right all right so we have both your views in on this let's see what the people feel about N Srinivasan becoming the new chairman of the ICC. Uh, more of corruption, more of match fixing. It just shows that um, anyone anyone corrupted can get into cricket again with the power. I don't expect nothing from him, seriously because after that controversy regarding Chennai Super Kings and that corruption, I don't think he's supposed to be the president chairman. Sorry. Uh, I don't expect anything from him. Someone clean should, with clean record, should be appointed as the chairman, not him. He's been already involved, and he's been a controversial uh, figure uh, related to the uh, the scams of IPL. So he getting that position and he being the ICC chairman, we cannot expect much from him right now. So it would have been better if someone else would have uh, taken that post. Uh, I want to congratulate Mr. Shinivasan for uh, being. The chairman of the ICC Cricket Board. What and to do some uh, good things for the board, cricket board, and for the uh, players. I need to organize some good tournaments and uh, for the youngsters who have really have good talents, and uh, he can promote them in the future. It's just expected that whatever he has done in the past, he should forget all this. He should keep all that aside and get into a good work and bring the cricket, bring the local people outside. Like in football, they have bought someone outside, so. It's very good if they can find out uh, talented people from small areas. He has to do only whatever is going on should continue. That's all. I don't think cricket has is uh, has saturated now for India. What more he can do, I don't know. By way of funding, funds are already there. Let him continue what is going on and not involve politics in the cricket. Well, he seems to be that way competent, but there has been a lot of opinion against him. But I feel he is okay, he will do something for the Indian cricket. We should develop the Indian cricket team, we should concentrate to develop the you know, Indian cricket team. He is okay is the best thing that was said about him. That's quite disheartening. And also, but you know, in stark contrast to these people who do not believe in him, are the 29 out of the 30, 31 people who re-elected him as a BCCI chairman, the people who have elected him as a chairman of the ICC. So there seems to be a bit of discordance here. You know, the public is clear on the fact that he should not be given an administrative position at all, much less in the ICC, whereas what's happened is the exact opposite. Well, I mean, look, uh, just to play devil's advocate, what the public feels is not necessarily what is right. Fair. I'm just playing devil's advocate. So Mr. Srinivasan has taken a position against adverse public opinion and said, you know, I'm going to fight it, contest it legally because what people think about me is not what I am. As he said, my conscience is clear, this, that and the other. I might also mention that globally in sports, administrators across the world in different sports are coming under a lot of scrutiny, harsh scrutiny. Not all of them are being looked at favorably, even including Mr. Yeah. Seb Blatter, who is head of the FIFA. So that's the lot of, you know, the, the administrators. Having said that, I think there are serious challenges now which confront Mr. Uh, Srinivasan. One is, of course, there are rumblings even now. FICA is one of them. Uh, while other member boards are have been quietened now, we don't know what's going to happen later. What are the three big challenges facing international cricket? And therefore, as chairman of the ICC, he's going to face them. The biggest is corruption in the sport. Right. And therefore, he will be in the line of fire willy-nilly. Right. The other is, how do you sucker test cricket you know we've seen now that even with great series being played new zealand versus west indies there are no spectators half empty stadiums if totally any. empty in the west indies in england which is actually a test watching country sri lanka versus england two great test matches in the last day of the match not many spectators so how do you sucker test cricket the third i think is how do you internationalize the game one of the problems which and we'll take pradeep's opinion this 
is that how three boards have been able to get into a dominant position is because there are only eight or nine, ten boards. Yeah. Unlike football, where there are almost 200 countries, or hockey, where there are 150 countries. Yeah. So the weightage in cricket moves or is skewed towards a couple of boards or three or four boards which are providing all the eyeballs and all the money. There is right. no division of the spoils in the proper sense. Right. So these are the challenges. Should he get cricket into the Olympics? The Olympic fold wants cricket. T20 right. cricket can go into the Olympic fold. Is Mr. Srinivasan going to be, you know, have that much vision to take it there? We don't know. So these are the three challenges which I feel is confronting the sport and therefore also the chairman. Right, and if he does matter, and if he does manage to get into the Olympics, that's one place, uh, one step closer to absolution from the public. It's not absolution, but it's expansion of the game. Fair enough. I don't know what Pradeep feels about it. Well, as I, 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 I know cricket is facing a, a huge crisis of, uh, in fact, of identity, if you might say so, because uh, cricket, as we knew, uh, was Test cricket, but over the years. Uh, one day cricket came in and it came in because the finances started drying up. Now uh, it's T20 and it's IPL. Uh, it's it's also there because the logic of market suggests that more people, because they want to watch the shorter format of the game, the sponsors uh, uh, are, are investing more money in these shorter formats. They are not investing that much in test cricket. So there is this problem that the purest form of the game may one day uh, die. And as uh, Srinivasan, as ICC uh, are facing these challenging challenges, but how do they deal with it? I think if you have a man who is heading the ICC, is himself owning an IPL team, it's very clear where the, uh, do his personal interests lie? Do his personal interests lie in, in the larger good of the game? Or how does he look at the game? Does he look at the game that, look, test cricket shouldn't die and we have to save it? Or does he look at uh, how do we generate more profits? I'm afraid that the, a man like Srinivasan probably would think of how to generate more profits. And he knows the profits come from, say, a game like IPL, where he owns his own team, because there he has a conflict of interest. So if you put that man at the helm, you already know, maybe I'm jumping the gun, but you already know uh, what his roadmap would be. And that is where I feel that a man like him, who has this kind of a conflict of interest, should not be heading a cricket body because finally, what is a cricket body? It's not there to generate profits. Yes, profits are an important. Uh, it, these are important things because you have to run the game. But its main focus is it's a trustee. It's a trustee of the sport. And if the trustee itself only thinks in terms of profits and benefits, then I think the, the game might be harmed in the long run. That's an interesting point that Pradeep has raised. And I think that you know this is obviously a concern. Uh, the only a bottom line approach, it may look good in the balance sheet, but it may not really help the sport. I think that's the point that Pradeep is making and I completely concur with it. So therefore, mm -hmm. and we are leaving the controversial aspect of whether Srinivasan should have been there or not. And I'm just saying as the chairman of the ICC, I think prioritization apart from how to kind of shackle corruption yeah. or eliminate it, that apart, that's a far wider complex uh, debate. Where test cricket is concerned, and Pradeep, I'm just spelling out, I think we have now come to the conclusion, all of us mm -hmm. who are cricket lovers and test cricket lovers, that you will not get hordes and the masses following it. Right. You know, that day and age has passed. Right. The whole mass of youngsters, they want maybe the instant gratification of T20 cricket, which is right. fair enough. So, has test cricket aged into an acquired taste? It, it, it has. And I think, therefore, like fine wine, like fine arts, mm -hmm. like heritage, you know, uh, subjects or buildings or whatever, or legacies, it needs to be preserved for what it is. And therefore, it needs to be given like an upper crust within the sport yeah. itself. Everything should be done to make that positioning clear. Mm -hmm. The attraction, the appeal of test cricket is because you love the legacy. You yeah. know, the Taj Mahal may be 600 years old. Or 500 years old, right. but more and more people come to see it because of what it is. I'm not even going to dare to ask you whether we should add some bells and whistles to the game. The bells, to and, add the bells and whistles actually come from legacy and heritage value. I think the positioning and the marketing of it, therefore, right. why is the Ashes such a big test contest? Right. Because England and Australia have decided that they trace it back to 125 years ago. And they say, wow, look at what has happened over this past century and a quarter. Right. And every successive series adds value from 
the preceding 125 years. That's what we need to do for test cricket for every match that is played. Right. I think I don't know, Pradeep. Do you do you think that that kind of thing works if the imagination is there and the and the will? I, I'm 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 sure it will work. Why shouldn't it work? You you see the crowds which come to watch the ashes. You see the stadiums are full. The tickets are sold in advance. Similarly, there was a time when India Pakistan series used to be such a big hit that a lot of people would say an India Pakistan series is a greater draw than the ashes itself. So I think what the Indian board or what the ICC needs to do is to, as you said, market it market it well because I am sure when when test matches are close affairs. When they go all uh, full distance to uh, the fifth day, even a draw, a last ball draw, uh, attracts people if it is exciting. And uh, one has seen crowds coming to the test matches when when the series gets interesting. So I am sure that if the Indian board or the ICC markets test cricket well, prepares pitches which are favourable uh, to both bowlers and batsmen, does not make graveyards where one team makes 600 runs and then. Uh, let's uh, dominate the other team, like what it happens in India when the outside uh, team comes. Uh, so if those things are avoided, and it is, it is as you said, uh, marketed as something which has a great heritage, great legacy, Test cricket will survive. And you know why it is important for Test cricket to survive is that there are certain skill set of skills which only you can see in Test cricket. Those kind of set of skills which are those skills are used by cricketers in the shorter format to become outstanding or even outrageously successful uh, cricketers. So if those skills go, what will be left? Then we'll be left with a T20 cricket where there will be just, it will be just like a gully danda match or a baseball match where you don't require ballers, you require bowling machines, the ball is thrown and the batsman hits a six. So to, to, to make test cricket survive is an important factor for all of us because only then uh, only then even T20 or one day cricket will have certain added quality to it. Thank you so much for joining us sir with your views. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Right. So Mr. Pradeep unfortunately had to leave. But I, ask, I want to ask you this question. You know with all the scrutiny on Mr. N. Srinivasan, can we actually expect him to toe the line and maybe he's going to surprise us all? He is going to set the line. How can he toe the line? Now that he is the chairman of the ICC, he is going to draw the line. Everybody else has to toe the line. Right. So, how, how do you think this line is going to be? Is it going to be a line that we are all going to like? Look, uh, I think what has happened now is he has got a big mandate. You know, in the, in the sharing of the spoils, as I mentioned earlier, there were some uh, misgivings from the other cricket boards that they might be short sold. Now, it seems that actually the money also which may accrue to them will be better or bigger than what used to be earlier. It yeah. may not be as big as what England, Australia and certainly India are getting. But they will, so there is no equity or equality. Right. It's on a, it's decided on how much I bring to the table and how much I get out of it. Right. So that's the kind of distribution of the wealth. But uh, I think that if he is fair minded and if he is broad minded, mm -hmm. Then, because he's got such a huge mandate and in the Indian Cricket Board and he represents, in a sense, the Indian Cricket Board also is so powerful, he can push the envelope. Right. So, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Okay, so that question of mine is answered. But I also had a few more questions about cricket that I went and asked out people. Let's see how well they fared. International Cricket League. Uh, International Cricket Council. Indian Cricket Association, uh, Indian Cricket Council, International Cricket Council, International Cricket Control. I think, I, I think so. Uh, uh, International Cricket Conference, International Cricket Council. Uh, I think so. It's, it was he was Mr. Srinivasan only. No idea. Previously, it was Sharad Pawar. I know. Oh, don't know. Australia or oh, England, England? It's at um, Churchgate, I think. Dubai, Dubai. London? I'm not very sure. Maybe in England? In Dubai? I think so. 2001. 2006, 2007, I don't know. 2008. Maybe 2008 or 2009. In 2012 or something? Wall. 
is known as a orthodox cricketer the ball he is a rock he is very steady very technically sound and all the ball a spin bowler as i believe you have a question you have an asked the viewers well you know what a uh, lot of people couldn't get rahul dravid's uh, nickname monica yes monica right so uh, my question is that uh, the current australian captain what is he known as no but, move for them but it's a very easy answer so whoever gets it right i'm i'm sure you're going to give them a prize yes of course if and you better be fast because i'm going to be googling as well <laughs> uh, you can tweet us your answers at boom news tv or at the cricket wala all right that brings it to a wrap that brings our show to a wrap but just closing thoughts you know so i asked what are we looking at way forward for mr n shrinivasan i think now he is in the saddle i think the only hitch that i can see possibly is that uh, if the mukul mudgal panel which is right. appointed by the supreme court comes up with a really adverse decision or wow. uh, you know uh, report against him and therefore the icc will be in a quandary how to handle it but yeah. barring that uh, you know he's got a two year tenure mm -hmm. let us see what he can achieve in two years two years is not 20 years however two years is also not two months there is right. a substantial period of time to do a lot of things red mudgal judgment against him and then you will have to tune into another show of cricketomania to see what mr ayaz memon thinks about that well right. we'll we'll expect uh, we'll wait for the mudgal report and let's see what happens then. let's see what happens then all right thank you so much for watching us and keep and do remember to keep batting for the right side